on November 1st, 2017, Gene Hagen started a wedding planning company, Extraordinary Studios. On November 30th, the company's records showed the following items. Use the information to prepare a November income statement for the business, similar to Exhibit 1.8. So Exhibit 1.8 would be like what I just showed you. So first thing I want to do is go through and I want to categorize all of these accounts because it'll make your life way easier, okay? So what type of account is cash? Accounts receivable? Asset. Everyone agrees it's an asset? Mm -hmm. Office supplies? Mm -hmm. Automobiles? Yes. Office equipment? Asset. Accounts payable? Yes. Liability, right? Accounts payable, we owe money. Owner's investments? Equity. Owner's withdrawals. Wedding consulting revenue. Rent expense. Salaries expense. Telephone expense. Utilities expenses. Okay, now just for fun. I'm going to do this. There's five different categories of, of accounts. Which ones fall in the balance sheet? Assets, liabilities, and equity. Owner's equity, yeah. Which ones fall into an income statement? So, this asks us to create a November income statement. Which one of these do we, which of these accounts, which do we need? Do we need any of these assets? Do we need any of the assets for an income statement? No. No, no we don't. Do we need the liability? No. no. Do we need the owner's equity? No. Is it in this income statement column? No. no. So, how many accounts do we have remaining? There you go. So. Let's put it together. First things first, we need to create a title for your, your statement. This will be the easiest mark you ever get on your midterms or your finals. If you don't do it, you get to... Uh, like that? Okay, no worries. If you don't create your title, you're going to lose a mark, and it is just a free mark you're giving away. So it starts with the top line, always centered, with the name of the business. So what's the name? A wedding planning company, Extraordinary Studios. The second line is what is the type of statement? What is the statement? So what is the statement? And the third line, the date. So this is for November. So that would mean we would need to say for month ended November 30th, 2017. We're going to get into um, 
the difference between balance sheets and income statements. I'll say it just once now, so maybe it'll trigger later on. An income statement is a period of time. So if you just write November 30th, 2017, do I know what period of time that would be? No, it could be a year. Your financial year could start on December 1st and it could be a full year. Or it could be a month, it could be a week, it could be six months, it could be a quarter. The end user doesn't know. So four month ended, November 30th, just tells the end user that this is for the month of November, starting November 1st, ending November 30th. Uh, if you wanted to write November 1st, 2017 to November 30th, 2017, that would be fine. You're, you're, as long as you're letting the end user know, the, the period of time that is the income statement is, is being referred to. A balance sheet, on the other hand, is a snapshot in time. It's one point in time. So you would never actually have a period for a balance sheet. You would only just have the date, if it was a balance sheet. There's a big difference. As you start to understand the accounts, you'll understand why. Uh, same reason why we call these temporary accounts. Accounts on an income statement are called temporary, and the ones on the balance sheet are called permanent. Because the reason these are temporary, and again, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, is that if I want to know exactly how just December of Extraordinary Studios did, I can make all of these accounts go down to zero and start again fresh. I can never do that with the accounts on the balance sheet. Right? If I wanted to compare November to December, I could zero out the accounts and start again. I can't do that with the balance sheet. So the temporary, permanent, for a period for income statement, and just a date for balance sheet. Okay, so what do we start our income statement off with? Revenues. Yeah, you start with the money you made. What do we have for revenues? So let's talk about our layout of our financial statements. The, the most, the, the statement that the most you'll see is three columns. So right now we have a two column statement. That should tell you that um, you do need to use both of them. Uh, you'll see ones with three and you'll, you'll see it. So this revenues is what we'd call like a category. This revenue actually isn't a account, right? Wedding consulting revenue is an account. This is just a subtitle. It's just categorizing it. So the way we do would work it is revenues would be on the left. Justification, any account totals, anything like that would be on the left. Any accounts would be indented. If we were adding up, we'd use the left column and we put any totals on the right column. Do we have any other revenue accounts? So we know that this is our total then, right? 22,000. So we can put 22,000 on the right column. But you'll see here for operating expenses. So now we have operating expenses. Is operating expenses an account? No, it's just a, it's just a heading. It's just a subheading. So operating expenses. And which expenses do we have? Rent expense, salaries expense, telephone expense, utilities expense, we can fill in the amount. So, and then we're going to finish with a Total operating expenses. So these numbers will go in the left column, right? Because this isn't the total, this isn't the final number. So 2,500, 6,000.
and we can put a little line here showing that that's all of them. We can add it up. Um, feel free to use your phone for a calculator in class. In the exam, you won't be allowed to. So if you need a calculator, I recommend getting one sooner than later. Don't wait till the last day before your, your exam. So we have our total revenue, we have our total expenses, and that needs to be, so we would have our So net profit slash loss within brackets. Yeah, you Eli? Say you, on the you are, just not your cell phone. Oh. Yeah, so don't, if you're using your cell phone in class or at home, that's fine, but just know that you're not going to have that at, in the. Same, same calculator from finance? You can use that, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. What's that? Graphing calculator? Uh, no, not graphing calculator, no. So we don't need one at the end. You need a dollar store calculator for this Perfect. class. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you want it, yeah, you will have to buy. Uh, you will have to buy a financial calculator for next semester. So if you want to order one off Amazon and save yourself thirty dollars, you can do that now. If not, they'll be available at the bookstore in January when you need it. But if you want to start, if you want to get your calculator, you'll need it for your entire academic career. So, um, Texas Instrument uh, BI two. Anyways. So, we have our net profit of $11,110. The, here how it says loss in brackets. If this was a loss, if our expenses were higher than our revenue, we would show this in brackets. That's how we show loss. We show loss in brackets. So by it not being in brackets, we, ought to, we know it's a profit. We finish off our, so anytime we sum or subtract, we use a single line. So you see how I've used a single line to show that I'm adding up all these expenses. I've put the total here. I've used a single line to show that all these category totals are complete. And now we're just getting our final. I've used a double line to show that the statement is complete. So I'll be looking for single and double lines in your exam. You'll have to use the proper format. You'll have to use the proper columns. And you'll have to show indenting. Any questions?